Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. You've downloaded the program, and you have verified that it does in fact work on your system, but you don't really know how to do anything with it. Maybe you're interested in going to the moon, maybe you're interested in rendezvousing with the ISS, but as you have opened Orbiter and looked at it, you just, you're kind of lost. Well, this video series is intended to help people just like yourself, but I am assuming that you're going to watch these videos in order. So if you happen to be fi finding my channel for the first time here in this video, then you definitely need to uh, stop this video, go all the way back to video number one, and work your way forward. Okay, now having said all that, let's get started here with uh, what we want to accomplish today. And what we want to do today is cover another MFD. In one of the previous videos, we took a look at how to use Burn Time Calculator to do some helpful and useful tasks with Orbiter. So today we want to uh, look at how to use BaseSync MFD. Uh, BaseSync MFD is another MFD that I find very much indispensable. Uh, I use it anytime I'm going to uh, line up with the base, uh, hence the name BaseSync MFD. Um, and you do that quite often. You know, I don't use it on every single flight because there are some flights where it's just not necessary. I don't have any need to do a base alignment. But it's definitely one of the core uh, MFDs in my toolkit, and I, and I personally wouldn't want to uh, have to live without it. So let's learn how to use it. Um, as before, let's uh, switch camera views over here to the larger view first of all. And as before, let's learn how to, uh, uh, first of all, where to get Base Sync MFD and then how to install it. So we'll start with that. Now, Base Sync MFD, I don't believe it exists on on Orbit Hangar, so you have to come to this website here and I'll simply put a link in the description below rather than try to, uh, you know, have you follow this link. Now, Base Sync, there, there are several MFDs on here, but Base Sync is all the way at the bottom. Now eventually we'll come back to this page and maybe grab one of the other MFDs on this page. But the one that we're interested in here is all the way down at the bottom. So just scroll to the bottom and we want Base Sync MFD. And this is, uh, it's a few years old, but it, this is still the newest version. So gra uh, just click the download link. And again, I recommend just putting that right there on your desktop so that it's in a nice and convenient location. Uh, but again, up to you, however you want to manage your own files. Once you have it downloaded, this one installs uh, exactly the same way that uh, Burn Time Calculator did, but let's take a look at what's inside the zip file. This time we only have three folders instead of uh, last time I believe we had four. And in this case, we really want all of them. We have a config folder and we, we need this one. This is a requirement. We have a doc folder. Uh, technically the documentation does not have to be installed, but it's a good idea if you uh, uh, go ahead and install that as well. It has a PDF that will give you a bit more information about the MFD. So to install BaseSync MFD, all we're going to do is highlight all three folders and we're going to drag that into our Orbiter 2010 installation let go and it'll obviously say that the directory already contains modules and we're just going to merge those changes so let's say yes and there we have it. We have all three of those directories now in our Orbiter directory, so we're good to go. Uh, once again, once you have the, the zip file downloaded and you've put the files in your Orbiter directory, go to Modules and find Base Sync MFD in your list, which it is also in Miscellaneous. So come to Miscellaneous, check the uh, Base Sync MFD uh, checkbox, and then you're all set. Now let's learn how to use Base Sync MFD. Now in order to do that, I'm going to start a scenario that I have here that has uh, several delta gliders in orbit around various uh, bodies. So Base Sync MFD, the, the short version of what it is used for is that it's, it's used to help you get lined up with the base. Okay, so let's just look at some usage examples here. Let me switch over to this view so we have the bigger MFDs. And let's start with uh, let's start with the moon. So we're in orbit around the moon here. And 
if we bring up map MFD and we bring up the display, switch that to orbit lines, we can see here that Brighton Beach, and we can even target Brighton Beach, we can see here that we're not passing over top of Brighton Beach. We're off by some amount. Now we could warp time forward uh, several orbits and eventually we would pass over top of Brighton Beach, but the number of orbits that we would have to go forward is quite a bit because the moon moves very slowly and in any case we don't know. So let's bring up Base Sync MFD and this is what it looks like here by default and it's pretty simple to use. What we're going to want to do is target Brighton Beach, so we're going to click the target button. And we, unfortunately we have to type it in, we can't use a menu system. So we tar target Brighton Beach. Now this uh, chart down here, or this table, is showing us how close we're going to be to Brighton Beach on any given orbit. On our current orbit, we're not going to we're going to pass within within uh, 351.63 kilometers of Brighton Beach. So you can see we're pretty far away from it. On our next orbit, we're going to be 330 kilometers away, so we're getting a little bit closer. And you can see as we go forward in our orbits, we get closer and closer to Brighton Beach. So one of the uh, most obvious and most useful aspects of this particular MFD is that it lets us predict the future. Unfortunately, it only lets us predict the future out to eight orbits. Uh, it would be nice if it would go out, you know, to 20 or even 30. And this just lets us know, you know, again, how far out into the future we're going to pass with reasonably close to Brighton Beach. Now, you can see here this trend is obviously down. So if we waited, um, I don't know how many orbits it would be, maybe 30 orbits or 40 orbits, eventually we would actually pass, uh, so we would actually pass right over top of Brighton Beach without ever doing any kind of an engine burn. So let's, let me just go ahead and demonstrate that actually. So let's go forward, and we'll, we'll have to go forward fairly quickly because otherwise it, you know, it'll take a long time. But you can see we, we completed that orbit, and now the eighth orbit we're going to be 186 kilometers, and now we've gone around again, so now it's 166, and you can see the 186 bumped up a line. Now on the eighth orbit, it'll be 146. You can see basically every time we go around one time, we're gaining about 20 kilometers on Brighton Beach. So that's one function of Base Sync MFD is it just lets us know when we're going to finally be over top of the base. And you can see these just move up one line at a time. And the line that's highlighted here in white or possibly it'll be yellow on yours, this highlighted line just indicates which passage is the closest to Brighton Beach. And right now it's always the last one. But eventually when we get down to the point where we're basically, you know, zero kilometers from the base, then we'll start getting farther away. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Let's just go ahead and continue warping time forward. So now on this last one here, eight orbits out, we're going to pass within eight kilometers of the center of the base. But now you notice that the last line is no longer is no longer white. Now the seventh line is white. That, that means that if we uh, continue to go forward past the seventh orbit, we're just going to get farther and farther away from the base. So let's for, fast forward time and see what that looks like. This current orbit uh, is 87 kilometers out, so we wouldn't want to do our deorbit here. Now we've gone around again, and that orbit is 68 kilometers out, but you can see that just here in a few more orbits, we're going to be within eight kilometers of the base. And then after that, again, it just gets worse. So that's one function of base sync MFD. That's one of the most uh, important and useful functions. One thing I'll, I'll note too is that the target, um, this resets all the time, and I don't know why it happens. It's really irritating. When this resets and says target surface, it's actually still targeting Brighton Beach in almost all cases. But just to be sure, in some cases you might actually want to press target again and then retype Brighton Beach, but it's almost a futile effort. Uh, you can see obviously nothing changed because it was still targeting Brighton Beach. But it's almost a futile effort because every 
like 30 seconds or a minute this resets and I have no idea why that happens it's really annoying now another function of base sync MFD that's really important is first of all let me warp time 4 to get past that 8th orbit so it's no longer the shortest one another important function of um, of uh, base sync MFD is that it tells us when and how we can bring this number down to zero, whatever our lowest, uh, whatever our distance off base is. If we want to, obviously, in order to land at the base, we want to be, we want our distance from the base to be close to zero. It'll never, it'll never be perfectly zero, but you know we can be within a hundred or two hundred meters. The way we do that. Uh, we have to make sure we have a couple of things set, and I should have mentioned this prior, but first of all, closest passage is what we want. If for any reason you have this on apoapsis, periapsis, or latitude, make sure it's on closest passage. Now for the sake of synchronizing our orbit to align with the base, we also want to make sure the equator is set to direct, and you do that just by clicking the ED button. E is the equator, D, uh, and then D is direct. So the two things we want to make sure is that we have closest passage and then the equator direct is set on direct. In order to get lined up with the base, we have to come around to the node. And the node is, he there's two nodes, there's one here and there's one here, and we can align with the base on either one. Just whichever one we come to first, it makes the most sense to use that one. This works a lot like using a line plane MFD, so it doesn't require a ton of explanation. Hopefully you've uh, watched all the previous videos and you're familiar with a line plane MFD. We're coming up to this node here in 860 seconds. That's given to us right here, TN, time to node. In order to bring our distance to the base to zero, in other words, this 63 kilometers or almost 64 kilometers, in order to bring that number down to bring it to zero so that we're passing right over top of the base, we need to do a 3.242 second burn using the full power of the main engines in the uh, orbit normal plus position. And we know that because right here, if I press mod, turn off that graphic, it says right here PLC, that's plane change. And it tells me that's how much time I need and it, this tells me which orientation I need. So we're gonna go ahead, going to go ahead and warp time forward to get to that point. And again, we balance our burns by doing half and half. So we're actually gonna do the burn when we're at about one and a half seconds. We're getting close to that point so let's go normal plus now to give the autopilot time to settle. And notice this is reset. It says target surface, but you'll notice this information is not changed. So I am, in fact, still targeting Brighton Beach. So now I'm just going to warp time forward until we're down to two seconds, getting very close to that point. And there we are, burning. And I'm watching the distance. And there we have our distance is now just 26 meters. So we're now on this, uh, this orbit that we're currently on. We're going to pass within 26 meters of the center of the base. So that's one of the other big uses of, uh, of this MFD is just simply to learn how, how to bring your off-base distance down to zero. It's, it's, more, it's, it's more useful, um, more accurate more helpful sometimes to use base sync MFD rather than just using VOR VTOL because notice here we're still 2,800 kilometers from the base and we've already got our base synced uh, our, our distance to the base is almost zero whereas when we if we just use the VOR VTOL we don't get any information from Brighton Beach until we're within 500 kilometers and especially for the absolute beginner that might not be enough time to yaw your vessel and get everything lined up so by using base sync MFD, uh, it just makes your landings a little bit easier because you can plan for them a little bit farther out into the, uh, you know, farther out before you have to land. So that is the primary use of base sync MFD. That's the primary way that I use it. Now base sync can do a couple of other things, at least one other thing, which is to uh, plan deorbit burns. I'm not going to get into that, and only because I personally don't use base sync MFD for that purpose, so I really, I, I don't know that aspect of it well enough. 
So if you feel like you already understand everything here, um, then you can probably go ahead and stop the video. But I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of more examples with BaseSync MFD just to help illustrate this point even farther. So let's, let's go to a different body. This time we'll go to Mars. And I've got a Delta Glider in orbit around Mars. Let's uh, display orbit plane. And let's target this base here, which is Olympus. And you can see here that our orbit plane is pretty far off of Olympus. So what do we have to do here? In Base Sync MFD, we'll target Olympus. And we can have this graphic on or off, it doesn't matter. Now, the same, we're looking at the same information here. According to Base Sync MFD, my current orbit, the orbit that I'm on right now, I'm going to pass, I'm going to be 1,200 and uh, 24 kilometers from Olympus on this current orbit. So in other words, when I come around here, I'm only uh, 3,700 kilometers from the base right now, but when I come around here, I'm going to be uh, 1,200 kilometers from the base. That's really, um, if, if I want to do a, you know, a landing, I, I really would like to be closer than that, although Mars has enough of an atmosphere that we can actually glide to the base but let's say that we want to pass right over top of the base. I can see, again, using you know just the prediction uh, table here, that if I just warp time forward by eight orbits, I'll be you know within 316 kilometers of the base, and that's, that's much closer than 1,000. So at the very least, I can do that. So let me go ahead and warp time forward. And it may be that, uh, you know, no, I was going to say it may be that the orbit after this one will be even closer, but it's not. So now at any given time, between now and my first orbit, I can bring this number down to zero just by adjusting, by doing a plane change burn at the correct node. I don't have, this is important to understand, I don't have to wait until we're down to just one orbit or two orbits. I can do this burn earlier. I don't think there's any fuel savings involved in doing it earlier, but we can do it all the way out here, you know, when we're still six orbits out. And we know when to do the burn uh, because we have the time to the node counting down here, and that's going to be in 917 seconds. So let's warp time forward to get closer to that point. And notice this time that the burn is going to be orbit minus, and I know that because it says here PLC plane change and it has the minus symbol. So let's warp time forward, get down to about 100 seconds. I overshot that a bit, but we'll be okay. Pressing orbit minus because that's what that's what uh, orbit, uh, that's what base sync is telling me to do. This time it's going to be an uh, 18, almost 19 second burn and we want to balance our burn. So we're going to begin the burn at uh, what would be nine and a half seconds when TN is nine and a half seconds, because half of this number is about nine and a half. Coming up on the burn, in fact, let me actually introduce one more idea. So we're actually gonna skip the burn at the moment. We'll do the burn at the next node. I wanna show how we can combine um, a couple of MFDs. Since we've already talked about, since we've already talked about burn time calculator, let's bring that up. And actually, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. So we'll, we'll we'll take care of this at the next node. So now we have to uh, since I since I didn't do the burn there, we're going to have to go around to the next node, and we can tell where the node's at because we were here and we got to go all the way around there. So at this time it would be plus, but let me skip it just so we can do it the other way. Okay, so we're coming up on this node in 600 seconds. We're almost there. Again, now that we're down below 100, let's go to real time and engage the normal minus autopilot to get us into that position. So when this number is about nine and a half, then we'll begin the burn. Okay, and burning. You can see that distance coming down.
and when it gets uh, really low, you want to back off the main engines or kill the main engines altogether. Okay, killing the engine so we don't overshoot, and then just adding in a little bit more, and there we have it. So what are we looking at now? We're looking at in, in five orbits, so not the orbit that we're currently on, but five orbits from now, we will pass within 366 meters of Olympus base. So let's go ahead and warp time forward and just make sure that we're telling the truth here. Okay, so that's going to be one orbit, so now we've got four more to go. And you can see the uh, you can see the orbital plane moving from east to west. And remember, this is meters at this point. It's not kilometers. Like the one above it is 604 kilometers. This is 365 meters. The meters, that's obviously a huge difference. If, if, you, if you get confused and you think this is kilometers, then you're, you, know, you can get yourself in some trouble. So now we're coming up to the last orbit. Now we're on the last orbit. So what we would do here, if we were, if we wanted to land at Olympus, we would go all until we were halfway around, and we would know that we're halfway around because this line is pointing to where Olympus is at. And then we can also just watch the time uh, or the distance count up. And when it starts counting down, we're halfway around. So now we're halfway around the planet. So this is where we would we would do our deorbit burn, and then we would come ha all the way around, and we would be passing here very shortly. Let me track our position and zoom way in. And you'll see that we'll pass right over top of Olympus. You know, within 365 meters at least. I don't think we can see it down below. Maybe, probably not. It's too far down. Oh, actually, I can see it here. It probably doesn't show up on the playback, but there's a little tiny white dot there. It's moving by, and that is Olympus. Okay, so that's the uh, main function, again, of, of Basync MFD. That's how I use it. And it's very useful. So let's just take maybe one more example. Let's go back. Let's go to Earth and display orbit plane. And we'll target Cape Canaveral. And we can see here again our orbital our orbital plane does not pass over top of uh, Cape Canaveral right now. And if we look at the uh, ground track, we can see that with uh, three orbits. We, we don't pass over top of Cape Canaveral even three orbits into the future. So we either have to warp time forward a bunch, or we can just kind of take a look here at uh, Base Sync MFD and see what it has to say. So we'll target Base, Cape Canaveral. And according to, according to uh, Base Sync MFD, on our current orbit, we're going to be 2,500 kilometers, almost 2,600 kilometers away from away from Cape Canaveral, and the situation doesn't really improve until we get down to here. It starts going backwards. So we could warp time forward and see if we can get a better passage. Uh, we can see just by going forward a few orbits, we're obviously getting much better. Now we're down here to just 500, uh, 500 kilometers, and all these would work, by the way, because the Earth's atmosphere is so thick that you can actually glide to the base just with cross range. But this MFD just let us know, uh, you know if we wanted to minimize our cross range that we can minimize it here at uh, the sixth orbit and possibly sometimes if you just go forward again uh, you'll even get even better results than this if we just go around a few more times. So let's just see what we come up with. And it looks like somewhere around five, six hundred kilometers is, is as good as that's going to get. So we would just um, go to one of the nodes like we did before and we know where the nodes are at because they're indicated here and here and we have the time to the node coming up to that node again we know which position to orient the vessel because it's given to us right here so we'll go normal minus it's going to be a 43 second burn so we'll want to start the burn at about 22 seconds, something like that, when TN is 22 seconds. Kind of over.
overshot that a little bit, that's okay. And you can see, you know, this is coming down. And it will obviously impact some of our other uh, some of our other passages as well, but the only one that we care about is the is the lowest passage. Go ahead and warp time four to get through that burn a little quicker. And there we have it. So on our third orbit, we are going to pass uh, just basically right over top of Cape Canaveral. And once you get up to that point, by the way, you can also change the, the number of uh, the future references here. You know, we have eight by default, and that's usually pretty useful. But if for any reason you want to change this to a smaller number, you can press num, and we can set it to three because we're going to be landing in three orbits, so maybe we don't want to have that extra data down there. If you set it to one, you'll note that uh, it, this line shows up in white, not because it's our very best passage, but just simply because we are, we're only showing one. And if we were to show two, you know, now it's saying the second orbit is the best, and then if we show three, of course, then that's our really good one, the 225 meters from the base. Um, that can't really think of anything else to get into on this MFD. Uh, this is the main usage for it. This is the main way that I use it. Uh, like I said, there is another part to this MFD for setting up deorbit burns, but I, I never use it for that. Uh, therefore, I'm not even I'm not even that good at doing it. So I think that'll be it. If you have any questions about uh, this MFD, or if you can think of something maybe that you'd like to see more of, let me know in the uh, comments down below and I'll try to cover that in some other video. Otherwise hit the like button if you like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you like the content here and you're not already subscribed, and I also have a Facebook uh, page where I post all my videos, pictures, other space related content, so check that out as well. Description will be in the, uh, or rather the link will be in the description down below. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. You've downloaded the program, and you have verified that it does in fact work on your system, but you don't really know how to do anything with it. Maybe you're interested in going to the moon, maybe you're interested in rendezvousing with the ISS, but as you have opened Orbiter and looked at it, you just, you're kind of lost. Well, this video series is intended to help people just like yourself, but I am assuming that you're going to watch these videos in order. So if you happen to be fi finding my channel for the first time here in this video, then you definitely need to uh, stop this video, go all the way back to video number one, and work your way forward. Okay, now having said all that, let's get started here with uh, what we want to accomplish today. And what we want to do today is cover another MFD. Uh, once again, once you have the, the zip file downloaded and you've put the files in your Orbiter directory, go to Modules and find Base Sync MFD in your list, which it is also in Miscellaneous. So come to Miscellaneous, check the uh, Base Sync MFD uh, checkbox, and then you're all set. Now let's learn how to use Base Sync MFD. Now in order to do that, I'm going to start a scenario that I have here that has uh, several delta gliders in orbit around various uh, bodies. So Base Sync MFD, the, the short version of what it is used for is that it's, it's used to help you get lined up with a base. Okay, so let's just look at some usage examples here. Let me switch over to this view so we have the bigger MFDs. And let's start with the get base sync MFD and then how to install it. So we'll start with that. Now base sync MFD, I don't believe it exists on, on Orbit Hangar. So you have to come to this website here and I'll simply put a link in the description below rather than try to, uh, you know, have you follow this link. Now, Base Sync, there, there are several MFDs on here, but Base Sync is all the way at the bottom. Now, eventually, we'll come back to this page and maybe get, grab one of the other MFDs on this page. But the one that we're interested in here is all the way down at the bottom. So just scroll to the bottom, and we want Base Sync MFD. And this is, uh, it's a few years old, but it, this is still the newest version. So uh, just click the download link, 
And again, I recommend just putting that right there on your desktop so that it's in a nice and convenient location. Uh, but again, up to you however you want to manage your own files. Once you have it downloaded, this one installs uh, exactly. In one of the previous videos, we took a look at how to use Burn Time Calculator to do some helpful and useful tasks with Orbiter. So today we want to uh, look at how to use BaseSync MFD. Uh, BaseSync MFD is another MFD that I find very much indispensable. Uh, I use it anytime I'm going to uh, line up with the base, uh, hence the name BaseSync MFD. Um, and you do that quite often. You know, I don't use it on every single flight because there are some flights where it's just not necessary. I don't have any need to do a base alignment. But it's definitely one of the core uh, MFDs in my toolkit, and I, and I personally wouldn't want to uh, have to live without it. So let's learn how to use it. Um, as before, let's uh, switch camera views over here to the larger view first of all. And as before, let's learn how to, uh, uh, first of all, where to be the same way that uh, burn time calculator did, but let's take a look at what's inside the zip file. This time we only have three folders instead of uh, last time I believe we had four. And in this case we really want all of them. We have a config folder and we, we need this one, this is a requirement. We have a doc folder. Uh, technically the documentation does not have to be installed, but it's a good idea if you uh, uh, go ahead and install that as well. It has a PDF that will give you a bit more information about the MFD. So to install Base Sync MFD, all we're going to do is highlight all three folders and we're going to drag that into our Orbiter 2010 installation let go and it'll obviously say that the directory already contains modules and we're just going to merge those changes so let's say yes and there we have it, we have all three of those directories now in our Orbiter directory so we're good to go.